Good morning, everybody, and welcome to ESO Daily. I'm your host, Mr. Craven. All right, guys, so uh, today we're going to take a in-depth look at um, which of the Sigic order abilities for the upcoming summer set are going to be worth the slot depending on your role. Uh, and also I'm going to be covering um, the Might of the Guild passive due to the changes to the Empower. So I'll be covering that and we will be discussing that today. Um, so pretty much we're going to go down through and I'm going to give you a breakdown of which abilities are going to affect which classes better. So a lot of people are already familiar with what we're looking at for the Sigic Order, what skills we're looking at. But the question of it is, which abilities are going to be worth the slot? Because remember, we have limited, you know, slots. So, you know, it's very important to us if we're going to, you know, change our rotation and our bar spots, what are we going to be looking at? You know, what abilities do we want to, you know, utilize to the best of our advantages? So, first off, we're going to take a look at time stop. Okay, so it freezes the passage of time at the target location, gradually reducing the movement speed of enemies in the area during the channel before finally stunning them in place for three seconds when the channel completes. Now, the morphs, borrowed time, negates healing done on enemies that are stunned. That's going to be really, really powerful in PvP, right? Really powerful, but keep in mind you still have a channel time of 1.5 seconds. So, you know, it's great um, for, you know, that aspect, but 1.5 seconds in PvP will get you killed. Um, time freeze is really good. Yo, Fred Face, what's up? Hope you're doing well today. Time freeze is really good. It removes the cast time, but it takes longer to stun the enemies. Okay, so it's, a, it's going to take a four seconds before it takes a stun. I think time freeze is definitely going to have a lot more capability in PvP. Borrow time is going to be like, you know, those ranged uh, casters. But for like stamina to use this as a CC effect, it's going to be really powerful. But keep in mind, it is at the cost of Magicka. Uh, neither of these are going to have PvE applications. Okay, but for PvP, we definitely see, you know, borrow time, definitely for more range, time freeze, stamina is going to be able to use this and really get, you know, have that nice CC effect. It's going to take a little longer, but in some of those hectic fights, we're definitely going to see uh, both of these utilized by both classes. Okay, imbue weapon is going to be the big one, so let's just kind of go over this. Infuse your weapon with power, causing your next light attack used within t two seconds. Now, keep in mind, it said next light attack within two seconds to deal an additional 1902 physical damage. So it's a stamina. It has two second duration. It's really good. Um, but let's take a look at the morphs. Converts into a magic ability and deals magic damage and applies a random status effect. That's the magic morph. Now, crushing weapon heals you for a percentage of the damage done. Now, keep in mind, it's a next light attack, right? At the cost of stamina. The self heal is really good for the crushing. And the elemental is great for the status effect. I'm talking insanely great for a status effect. So I, I really feel like these are viable options to amplify and get effects out of it. Is it going to be utilized in every build? Questionable. But you're definitely going to see both of these applications in PvE and PvP. So they're really, really good for, for the status effect and for the self-heal. Damage, you know, it, it's questionable because we see a big gap at night. Well, on Magicka, it's skill stamina. But... I just, you know, the next light attack, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, I'm kind of like, I kind of feel whatever. I'll be getting into that whole conversation with the, the passive of the might of the guild and the empower, but for the status effect and for the secondary effects, really well worth it. So I like the secondary effects. The next light, I kind of feel like it kind of got gypped in that aspect, but it needs to maintain some balance. So I understand it. So acceleration. Bend time and space around you to gain major expedition for three seconds and minor force for 12 seconds, increasing your movement speed by 30% and critical damage done by 10%. Now, this is huge because now we have the channeled acceleration. 
triples the duration, but adds a cast time, or you can go race against time. Channeled acceleration is really good for the, the seconds, but it's way too long. I don't think channeled acceleration is going to get used. I really don't. I'm just going to say it. It's the, for the cast time for PVE or PVP. It's just, you know, it's a channel. Channels are usually frowned upon by most players. Most players want to maximize as, as fast as possible. Race against time for a Magicka user is going to be big. This is not going to affect stamina users because stamina users are going to continue to do what? Use the rearming trap. They're going to continue to use it. But the race against time for the Magicka users is going to be the must-have in the bar slot. Because why? It's going to increase the critical damage by 10%. And it's, a, it's, it's an instant cast. So that's what's really, really great about the race against time. So race against time, you're going to see in configurations across the board with Magic users. Channel acceleration, you might see one or two people using it. But for given the fact that it's 1.3, sure, it's 36 seconds. Great. And this one is only 12 seconds. But given the fact that I can go ahead and reapply this throughout my rotation, race against time is just going to be the way to go. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at Mend Wounds. Now, first, it invokes the rights of Moita, replacing your next light or heavy attack used within three seconds. Now, keep in mind, next light or heavy, it's not, you know, within, with, it's not for three seconds, it's within. So it has to be, it's only one applied within the duration, right? So it's not going to affect all your light attacks or heavy attacks for three seconds, it's only going to affect within three seconds. So it's only going to apply to one, but, you know, um, with the uh, healing abilities that can be used on allies, so you can hit your allies with it. And essentially, you're healing them for a light attack for 2,000. Your heavy attack is going to heal for more, right? Because it only takes two seconds to do a heavy attack. What's up, David? So it takes a two second to do a heavy attack, but that's a huge burst heal. So for um, certain healers lacking burst heal, like the Nightblade, this becomes a very, very viable option. But other healers, not so much. Why? They have a burst heal. Sure, it's only 2,079, but it's only one effect. So given the fact that they're going to be using utilities, they're going to be using other healing abilities. Not every class is going to use this, say like the Templar or the Warden, but for like Sork healers, um, potentially, but they have the Twilight Matriarch. But Nightblade and uh, DK, this is very, very, very much an option for a nice burst effect. Now, when we take a look at the Morse, we got the Men's Spirit, increases your allies' physical and spell resistance while you heal them. That's really, really nice, okay? So while you heal an ally, you grant them major resolve and major ward, increasing their physical and spell resistance, right? That's kind of really nice. I really like the men spirit. I feel like it's really good uh, because it's at, during that time duration that you're actually focused on healing them specifically, that they're going to get that resistance and they're going to need less. They're going to be able to withstand more damage. So it's really nice, and this is the first time in the game that we actually see an effect that's targetable towards said player. So all abilities have like a, you know, an, a an AI that's basically saying, okay, the heal goes over here. The heal goes over there. Yo, Scott, Alora, morning. I hope you're all doing well. So this is the first, first effect that we see targeted. We, we can target something specifically. Where other healing abilities, the AI takes over and says the healer, the heal effect's going to go here. The heal effect's going to go there. In this aspect, you control who's getting the heal. It's going to be really kind of situational because keep in mind, in certain mechanics, we're going to do a hard stack. But if we're in a soft stack, this is going to be kind of detrimental because it's going to go against you based on, you know, targeting. So when you're taking a look and you have to turn, sometimes, man, if you're not focused right away, it's going to cost you. Tanks, though, if you're focused in on tank healing, it's going to come in handy. Symbos uh, symbiosis. You heal yourself for a percentage of the healing done to the ally. Morning, Robert. I hope you're doing well. Symbiosis is good 
Uh, I really like this for some of the, you know, what we're going to be looking at in as far as some of the harder con uh, vet DLC content because you don't want to die as a healer. So for healers, uh, this is going to be really good. Uh, tanks too. If a tank needs self-healing, it's going to come in handy when they weave in between, right? So when they do a light attack, boom, they get it. They get a, a, a they can heal an ally in front of them. But unfortunately, you usually have aggro, so you can't expect the tanks to always use this. But in certain situations, maybe an off tank could use it. But a lot of times, tanks can use this. It's going to be situational. And most likely, it'll probably apply to an off tank, not a main tank. But DPS will never use this. And uh, this also can work in PvP, but I doubt it will. The only reason being... Um, it's, it's usually when the healer's like on guard. So imagine a guard, right? You have a guard between the tank and the healer. This is where an ability like this is going to apply in PvP. Just being able to apply it to when uh, you, and a tank has some a healer guarded. It's going to be really great. It's going to be actually OP in that situation. So heads up. Okay, meditation. Let... Okay, focus your body and mind into a meditative state, healing for 1,563 health and restoring 1,518 magic or stamina every one second. You remain in a meditative state. Okay, I'm sure most of you seen the video on meditate. Deep thoughts increases the amount of magic and stamina restored and introspect, introspection. Maintaining the channel increases the amount of health restored. I don't, I don't like the ability's channeled effect. It's good. The restore is great, actually, on both aspects. It'll kind of have certain applications for people struggling for resource management, especially in PvP with drains. It's going to be good for that, uh, especially with the passive uh, for um, deliberation. You get that major protection. So for healers in PvP, it's going to come in handy. But a lot of times in PvP, you're not going to stand there and just say, oh, wait a minute, stop stop hitting me. I need to recover my resources. Same thing with PvE. You're not going to stop doing what you're doing to re regain. When are you going to be on Xbox again, Robert? Haven't seen you um, in a while. I thought I saw Robert a couple days ago. Were you on like three days ago, Robert? I thought I saw you like Friday or something on. Man's busy. You're a busy man, aren't you, Robert? <laughs> so, to me, meditation's great for recovery, but you're not going to see it used quite often. Okay, we'll just cover over the passives really quick. Uh, seen the Unseen, the insight you have gained from Psychic Order grants you visions of the spiritual world. This is really cool, especially for those um, situations. Should be on this weekend for a good amount of time. Nice. I'll definitely make sure I'm on this weekend then, Robert. Clairvoyance, reduce the cost of your Psychic Order abilities. Spell Orb, I love this effect. I love Spell Orb. This is probably one of the most powerful passives to apply. And most most of your, your uh, builds will have one Sigic Order in it just because of this passive. Just because of it. You're, you, if you're a Stamina, you're going to try to slot one. If you're a Magicka, you're going to try to slot one. Why? This passive. You're going to try to get one in because of this passive. It's really good. Proc, the proc time is really great. Love it. Love that, this, this passive. Concentrated barrier. When you have a Sigic Quarter ability slotted and you are blocking, you gain a damage shield that absorbs 5,000 damage. For tanks, this is why I was talking about tanks and using some of these abilities. Because for tanks, this is going to be a really nice situation. Even though it's only 5,000, it really does come in handy in those situations. This damage shield then recharges back to full strength after you spend 10 seconds not blocking. So in between fights, it's going to get a recharge. Yeah, we need to run PvP. Definitely, man. Work and life has been a little busy. I imagine, Robert. And, of course, we will cover deli uh, deliberation. So when we're casting a Psychic Order ability, uh, we gain major protection. It's way more effective with the meditation. So, and then of course, undo. Step backwards in time, resetting your health, magic, and stamina in position that you were four seconds ago. Pre, pre, 
precognition while you cast this ability uh when you you can cast this ability while crowd controlled and will automatically gain crowd control immunity huge huge that is badass temporal guard while slotted your damage taken is reduced so this is really good for tanks this is really really good and uh while slotted you also get the minor protection that is huge for the tanks. The Temporal Guard is really, really juicy for tanks. Really love this. Love it. I love the ultimate. So there's, but the one thing about it is DPS. It's, it's, Magicka users are going to use acceleration, right? Questionable on a view. The status effect's nice, but it's only going to affect next light attack. But for stamina users, you want to go ahead and slot an ability. Why? Because the spell orbs. It's going to increase your damage, right? You're going to you're going to get it. Most likely, you're going to use the imbue weapon for your light attacks. Magicka users can use it for that status effect, especially DKs. Keep in mind the changes to D mag DKs now with burning status effect and recovering Magicka. Very very important. So this could you could very well see this on a lot of builds. But these are the two that's going to be big in PvE. For healer, Mend Wounds is nice. Time Stop, not going to use in PvE. PvP only. This is going to be more of a tank effect or PvP effect. And then Meditate, you're not going to see hardly anybody use it. Precog is going to be all over PvP, exactly. Precog is definitely going to be the big one for PvP. It's going to be huge. Time stop, you're going to see time stop in PvP too, for sure. So, and once again, it becomes, everything's just, it's going to be interesting though, but everybody's going to have one ability due to this passive, just the way it is. Imbue weapon, it's going to be probably Stam. You're going to see this with Magicka, for sure, the way these two. Healers, situational, depending on the class healer for Men Wounds. So that's kind of that. Now let's go into the Mages Guild. This is where I really, I, it broke my heart seeing the change to Might of the Guild. Mystic, Robert, David, and I should all group up uh, and go wreck everything in PvP. Dude, I'm in, Scott. Now, I mean, Robert's PvP and Mustang, we'll all get together. We'll, we'll, th we'll, have a, we'll have a party. We'll have a PvP party. Let's do it Saturday night. We'll have a PvP party. I'm definitely in. I'm definitely in. I love PV. I was PVPing last night. I got talked in with some guildies to go into Cyrodiil. Went with Stam Sork. It's doing damn good with Stam Sork. I'm really looking. I'm looking a lot better with Stam Sork. There's a couple things I'm still not like. Ugh, I'm not a you know the best, but I'm looking damn good. So I'm really happy about it. Might of the Guild. Okay. Now, really important that I'm going over this today. Casting a Mage's Guild ability grants you empower. Okay, so there's change for Empower. Increasing the damage of your next light attack by 40% for 5 seconds. It's not light attacks for 5 seconds. It's the next light attack within 5 seconds. It's unfortunate, but here's the major thing. Right? Casting. You, any of the Mage Guild abilities you cast will affect it. It will give you the Might of the Guild. Now, in the past, I've used DGen to use my, my proc. Why? Cost efficiency. But when now with the Sigic Order and the, the thing, it's kind of questionable. The Major Sorcery is great. It's a good way to get Major Sorcery, but the problem of it is you can get Major Sorcery through pots. Right? The self heals okay, especially if it'll stack. You know, if you're getting that healing effect, you can stack the healing effect. Right? On top of it. It's like, okay, DGen was really good for me. Saturday night, I am in. Okay, great. Okay, we got two. We know we know most likely we'll get Mustang, so there'll be four of us. Hope, hopefully, David. David, you definitely be, better be there Saturday night, bro. So that'll be five of us. We'll definitely we'll get together. We'll uh, we'll we'll do a Saturday night PvP run. I'm definitely in. So the thing about it is, DGen was cost effective. Inner Light is costly. Most of the time you slot this because you want that max magicka by 5%. You want it. 
I'm in. Just don't tell anyone I was running as a weak ass yellow. Whatever, dude. You're going to love it. You know you will. Damn right. Yes. Okay. Now, all I just need to do is get Storm into a yellow and get him in our team. Storm, if you're watching, you better be making a yellow character this week. You know you want to. It's cost effectiveness. So let's go over this. I'm going to do this really quick. Okay. So I'm going to hit a light attack. We got 1304. Okay, you guys see it? Now we go up to 1815. Right? That looks pretty good. It's th That looks good. 500 damage? But at the cost of 4000 Magicka? And it's only going to affect one attack. One attack! I'm spending... I'm spending 4,000 for 500 damage. It's not worth it. It's not, it's, it's going to deplete resources between the weave. Hey, easy there, David. Ouch, that hurt. <laughs> it's going, to, it's not cost effective. I really think Zoss should have been taking a look at the duration for the cost. Sure, you can use something like D-Gen. Problem of it is, with the new Sigic Order skill line, no one's going to, like, even myself included, I doubt I run the D-Gen now on the rotation. It was good when I was procking up the spammable between my durated effects. It kept my DPS and high, kept my recovery due to the uh, passives. It looked really peak at that point. But now, with the changes to Empower... Unfortunately, the cost effectiveness is out the window. So Mage's Light isn't going to be used now to proc Might of the Guild like it was before. Why? Its cost effectiveness isn't worth the damage output. Especially when I take a look at skill like Funnel Health, which is only costing me 2,004 for 4,000 damage. Fuck 500 extra damage. I'm getting... Thousands of damage. That is relative in far as rotation and cost effectiveness. So now, my inner light proc is out the window. It's gone. It's completely poof. No more. So, I feel like if they were to change the effect to, dur to a duration... It would be more probable. It would be more usable. So if we increase the next light attacks, plural, not singular, by 40% for five seconds, then that would be worth the proc. That would be worth it. But the next singular is, guess what? Not worth it. Especially if, even if I use any of these abilities... It's just not worth it from a PvE aspect. Now, PvP, that could be a whole different ballgame. You know, that could be a whole different ballgame for PvP. But for PvE, when we're talking PvE, the proc is out the window. It's gone. No one's going to spend 4,000 Magicka for a couple hundred points of damage when they can they can use their spam bull and reap more benefit out of it the slots still will apply with the with the inner light for the max magica no doubt about that but unfortunately once again the major prophecy we're, we'll, we can get from pot as well as our major sorcery question of it is the proc the the activation for the passive is no longer applicable and the, uh, no one is going to even give a shit about might of the guild passive no one's going to care about Empower. Nobody's going to care about it. Nobody. Uh, even if it's stacked with the weapon, which it does. So that's another thing I wanted to get into. You can stack the effect. And a lot of people would say that. Okay. Well, it stacks. Of course it does. Right. So let's say I take the elemental exp uh, weapon. And I can do. I can cast this. Right? So I can cast. Cast. Hit, and it'll stack. Right? And it does. So I can stack that effect. I oh, didn't mean to do a... And it stacks. It's going to stack. 
question of it is, when we take a look at the, the cost management, 2,000, 4,000, 6,000 damage. 6,000, right? So if I cast, I cast, I hit 28, 29 still. And my cost effectiveness is still intact for my spammable for 2, 4. So it's like double for less. When are we going to get a PvP target dummy? <laughs> Yo, MW, welcome to the stream. I hope you're doing well today. So the thing about it is the elemental weapon and the might, uh, the empower buff do stack. The problem of it is to proc the inner light for the cost effectiveness, not worth it. Now, a lot of people can argue, can you use the D-Gen? D-Gen is still going to be heavy in PvP, uh, because it's a really nice effect to to proc everything at a low cost, but for PV for PVE rotation, it it just it becomes like almost redundant. It's just like you're gonna you proc everything as fast as possible and keep everything up throughout the durations. Nah, and I don't know if you guys if I'm lagging if you guys see I'm lagging, but my latency looks like shit. So it just becomes the question. There, there, there are questionable things that we have to take a look at. And unfortunately, Empower is going to be garbage. It's just garbage. The Empower buff is garbage. Now for the DK, for the double Empower buff, it's going to be worth it. For the chains, the Empowering chains, that is uh, very effective. Especially for the, the effect that you're trying to go for. But trying to use any of these abilities to proc up, unless you're dropping the shooting star, inner light is not going to be cost effective. I hated inner light's cost for anyways. That's why I use the D-Gen. Got the nice effect. When I did light and heavy attacks, I also... Oh my God, Robert, thank you. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. D-Gen was very cost effective. Also gave me a self-heal. Also gave me my builder. It was really, really peak. Now, Fire Rune for PvP is going to be another set way to get the Empower buff, to stack the effect. But at the end of the day, to spend double, to get less, not worth it. It's just not. Light Attack increase is really good. I'm really liking the changes with light attacks. I also really like the, the fact that they adjusted the values between the light and atta heavy attack, separated the two. So it's really looking really good because it promotes what? Weaving more consistently. And that's something that everybody has stressed that's, you know, been content creators is the importance of getting the light attacks to proc more consistently between the rotation and all this does is re-promotes this now some of the sets will oh my god like i said thank you robert thank you so much brother it really promotes uh the light attack rotation and it's going to be a benefit so once again how does this affect with the sigic order in a lot of ways because now if i not if i don't use a inner light back end bar it's going to do what give me a spot in which i can set a new sigic order skill line without doing what sacrificing my original configure uh, dps configuration so instead of keeping inner light on both bars i can use the pots i can slot now what my acceleration my race against time and that's going to be huge for my DPS without what? Losing out and man, then getting the spell or passive applied. Now for stamina users, once again, acceleration isn't going to be the way to go. But they will be using this one for a slot and get that weave in between. Is Empower only going to hit on light and heavy or can we still use it on, on skills too? Okay, so the way the new Empower goes, uh, they changed Empower. It used to affect your next ability. Right, Scott? But now what it does, uh, Empower increases the damage of your next light attack. So Empower now increases light attack damage by 40%. So there are different ways to get Empower buffs in the game. Um, very limited. But the, uh, with the Mage's Guild, anytime you activate, or you cast the Mage's Guild ability, you are, grant, you, grant, or you are granted Empower. So that was really good to you know use towards our spammable, through our rotation. 
So what it did was I would use DGEN as a cost-effective way to multiply my spam ability between my duration, my durated effects, thus increasing my overall damage. Now, a lot of people want to know why I don't do like clickbait or anything because I keep certain things, you know, a eh, little whatever. But I've always told you guys, I use DGEN. I use it as a proc in what for my spammable that keeps my, my, my spammable at its highest point. If we can't use it on skill anymore, then it would seem like a nerf to Nightblades. Unfortunately, that's what it intent, what it's intended to do, especially Stamblades. Stamblades, you'd see with the inner light, hit the proc, hit the empower, boom. All of a sudden, you're dead. You're dead without even having it, without a count, being able to counterplay it. And basically, it was a nerf to the, to the passive, to the, to the empower buff. So now empower buff applies to the next single single light attack within five seconds so you have a five seconds to use it right so when i go ahead and, and hit this i have five seconds to use it but it's only going to apply to my next light attack not next light attacks within five seconds i feel that should be changed if they change it for the duration then it makes it more cost effective and more utilized unfortunately because of the way in power of the the passive is no one is going to use it. If they were to do that, it's not, you know, affecting anything but what? Promoting light attacks within the, within the duration. So, unfortunately, the next singular attack is affected. So, if I do one light attack, I hit 1304. I hit 1304. I hit the this, and I hit it again. Now, I have 1815 at 4,000. So, I'm only getting 500 damage for 4,000 Magicka when my spammable, which only costs less than 3k, does way more damage. Maybe I won't die every 10 seconds to Nightblades. That was the intention. That was the intention. And it does work. That sucks. Stamblades is my main. <laughs> Did you use the inner light proc, Scott? I didn't just because I I've, I never wanted to get like caught up. In, in, I'm already building cheesy builds. Like I build like cancer builds anyways. So, but I won't, I wouldn't do that because, you know, I felt like it was too like, ugh, like cringe, but and people do it and I don't, I don't persecute them for it, but, but I know it, it is affected. It has affected stand blades dramatically and it, and it will. But definitely we can see the stack though. Like I said, once again, you can use this to stack. And it's really nice. So it, it has a nice effect. I really do like the elemental weapon and the other one for the stam. I feel like it will be used. Magicka, it's going to be hit and miss for this ability to be slotted. Because why? Bar space is limited. For stamina, it's going to be more frequent because of the passives. You did use it. <laughs> yeah, it hit hard too, didn't it? I bet you killed so many people with that because it would just wreck them before they even knew what hit them. It would totally just wreck their asses. And you know, it was funny. It was. It was hilarious. Now, bar placement's going to be a big uh, thing. You can see I've like kind of just was playing around with the bar and, and slot spaces because most likely I want to use the Sigic Order skill. Right, if I'm going to use this ability, race against time, keep in mind, I it's going to be um, 12 seconds. I can afford to put this kind of anywhere, right? I could put race against time almost anywhere, but elemental uh, the elemental weapon is going to be on primary weave bar. So if I'm going to use this, I would have to take something like my merciless resolve and back bar it. Why? I'm going to lose a little damage on it for the lightning unless I go dual uh, flame staff, which I'm most likely not going to do because I want to magnify the um, passive for the Destro. So I'll lose a little DPS because I want this within two seconds. I could do the bar swap, but I really want to maximize what? My flame weave. So let's get into this. So if I'm going to use this, right? My flame weave deals 14-3. Lightning, 13. So my flame's a lot harder. So, but when I hit this now, and I hit, now I'm dealing 29. 
That is huge. And you can see these spell orbs. I really like these spell orbs. So you're going to main bar because you only got two seconds. Look at that. Look at the spell orbs. They're so badass. I really, really like. But remember, it's only next light attack. It's not going to whatever. That with wrecking blow hit about 12k crits. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. I've seen the, I've seen so many people. Yeah, it's crazy. It was nuts. So most likely, if I'm going to use the imbue weapon, I want to go to it with the main bar, whatever my main bar is, because I got a very short uh, window. But the orbs will, um, you know, still uh, apply on the bar swap. So that's kind of really nice. A nice situation with it so just a heads up guys i wanted to kind of go over this tell you guys which abilities are going to be like i said magica elemental weapon is really good especially with the status effect really really great uh it's going to be hit and miss on uh, build rotations uh based on each class so i will say that for stam users though they're going to use this there it's going to be a slot you can almost guarantee that's going to be a slot for a stam user all the way Magicka user, not so much, depending. It depends. And, but the race against time is going to be the, 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 the skill to have. Why? You want that minor force. It's going to be huge. It's going to be massive change. So just the heads up, guys. Sigic Order is looking really good. PvP, a lot of applications. PvE, depends. I like the tank applications. Meditate, I'm a little eh. Mend Wounds. Hit and miss. Nice burst heal, though. Nice burst heal for the uh, for anybody who doesn't have it. Certain classes won't even bother with it. With the stand blade, you are able to keep in power up 75%. Yeah, you are right. Yeah, it was crazy. It was definitely nuts. And that's why it got a nerf bat. It was never intended to do it. They weren't intending it to for uh, stamina to rock around with empower all the time. And just to stay, you keep your empower buff, you're running stealth, walk up to somebody, and then they're dead. It wasn't intended to do that. Unfortunately, players are smart. You can't blame. Don't hate the player, hate the game, right? That's what you say. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Unfortunately, they decided to put a giant nerf bat to it. On one rotation to kill someone in PvP. Oh, yeah, definitely. But now it's affecting light at the next light attack. And I really think they need to make it plural, not singular. Especially for cost effectiveness. Because nobody's going to proc might of the guild. No one's going to give a shit about Empower. No one's going to care. Nobody is going to give a shit. I can promise you that. So this passive becomes garbage. Becomes garbage. It's junk. It does stack. People will ask, will it stack with an elemental weapon? Yes, it will. At the cost of 6,000 Magicka. Sure. <laughs> it does. I'm not going to lie to you. It does. It will stack. It will magnify. And certain sets will even take it further. Some of the new sets will take it even further. So I will be getting into that another day. But there you have it. Pretty much we've kind of gone over this. Sigic Order. You know what? Now you guys know what skills you're going to use and which skills in which situations you're not. So I hope this helps. Thank you again, Robert, for the donation. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If anybody has any questions or comments, please post below. Once again, I'm Mr. Craven, the CSO Daily. And as always, have a nice day.